Hey guys, this is Grawl. <coughs> Whoa, sorry. <laughs> Hell of an intro. Um, okay, so if you're watching this video, then you probably watched the previous video where I showed you this factory and how to make it work and what the buttons do and stuff. And uh, this video is going to be the one where I explain everything in detail, how I came up with the idea, how I set everything up uh, so hopefully this video would help you if you want to create your own factory for anything either for a ship or maybe you have your own torpedoes or maybe okay thought I heard something sorry uh, so yeah maybe you want to create ships or any other vehicles or even mechs or mech warriors whatever <laughs> That's up to you, but, you know, I'm gonna go through everything in detail explaining how I did this. So, okay, first problem I encountered when I built this platform, it was a station, okay, it wasn't a large ship, it was a station. And, uh, the problem, if this is a station, when you weld the ship, using this shaft down there uh, the ship becomes part of the station because it's kind of connected to it so when you cut the shaft the ship is stationary it won't move I even tried turning the damn thing on uh, using the control panel over there that I'm aiming at right now so I turned the reactor of the torpedo on, I turned the thrusters on, and the thrusters were blasting like crazy, but the torpedo was remaining completely still because it was considered uh, as a station. Now, I'm guessing, I, I didn't try it, but I'm guessing I could have gone to the control panel, go to info, and then uh, click convert to ship, and that might have worked but that would have uh, made it you know not so automated so that was not a solution because you would have had to intervene during the production to trend, uh, convert it to a ship and now my screen is frozen it should come back soon I apologize for that old graphics card so that was the first problem I encountered, so I converted the whole platform into a ship, but then the problem with that is that uh, even after adding all the thrusters everywhere because I did not want it to move or to go anywhere, uh, and I also, shit, okay, I, I forgot I removed all the gyroscopes underneath, I'm gonna have to add some before publishing the blueprint, but anyways. Um, so yeah, even with all the thrusters and the gyroscopes, when the weight of the torpedo was being transferred to another phase, the whole platform was shifting left and right. It was rotating because of the weight of the torpedo being transferred, so I was like, damn, I didn't want that thing to move. So I tried merging the platform here with a station platform using merge blocks. It brought me back to the very first problem. The torpedo would not move because once the platform was merged with a station, it became a station. So merge blocks, not a solution. Now, as you can see here, connector blocks this is the solution this is what made everything work now this thing is completely stable it's not moving at all and for as long as it's going to be connected here to a station it won't move now this just imagine that this is your station the one in your survival game and this is connected to your station using a connector block now when you download this Obviously you can grind these off and uh, make them go anywhere you like and connect it however you want. This It's, it's only there because right now this is how it's connected. <clears throat> 
and everything is also connected underneath and uh, this large cargo container is where all of your materials would be stored but obviously I would definitely recommend to connect this platform to your refineries and assemblers so that you don't need to transfer stuff manually on your own so as long as you have the materials in the assembler uh, the welders should work and everything should work and the torpedoes should get produced. Now when I started the project um, obviously I knew I was gonna need welders on each side to weld this thing I knew I was gonna need a grinder to grind the shaft so I, I this is exactly how I built it originally I did not modify the design I could probably do that to make it more efficient or economic so that I don't use as many welders or you know stuff like that but after everything was done I had put so much work in it that I I was too lazy to try and modify anything everything was working so I kept it this way I also knew that I was gonna need a bunch of timer blocks so I just added a bunch on there and then I started using them one by one as I needed them and uh, at the very very end when everything was working properly and I knew I wasn't gonna need any more I deleted the ones that I did not use or that I ended up not using <clears throat> so uh, the design itself doesn't have to look like this that's up to you um, I had never built a factory before when I built this I just knew it could be done I had seen a couple on YouTube so I tried uh, I tried my luck at building one and this is you know how I built it and also um, originally I did not put any armor blocks anywhere it was just pipes pistons welders grinders landing gears rotors it was just you know the mechanical stuff okay my screen is frozen again I really apologize for this it's really annoying and uh, so yeah I was saying the armor blocks I only added this at the very 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 end just to give it a more finished or polished look uh, these were not there from the beginning okay not anywhere the glass or the windows were not there this little cabin here it, it didn't have a roof in fact it was just a bunch of timer blocks here and uh, more there so I just thought hey I could use these as part of a wall and then I built walls around it windows and a roof and that's it but that again it was only to give it a more polished look also I do want to say that when you do build something like this don't try and imagine the whole thing from the beginning all right go one step at a time so that you can encounter only one problem at a time and fix one problem at a time and then when that one phase is working perfectly then go ahead and think about the second phase and how you're going to do it and set it up and then you're obviously going to encounter problems on the second phase as well deal with these problems before you move forward I spent at least a week, probably more, building this entire thing just a little bit before work, a little bit after work, and uh, you know, as much as I could during my days off, but this is not the result of a two hours project, okay, this was built over time. So once I got the welders to work, you know, I, I knew it was... Uh, I knew this phase was complete, so I added a uh, some conveyors here, attached a rotor to it, attached a piston and landing gear because I knew I was going to want to transfer this to a different location because these, this here, you know, the 
the welders were in the way and stuff so I didn't want to have to come with this ship over there and pick it up from here so I I wanted to have it transferred to an area that was clear but obviously when this gets transferred it still has these three blocks connected to it so originally my idea this wasn't here my idea was to lay the torpedo on top of this landing gear and then come and pick it up here after grinding off the three blocks manually but then I had to go to work and while I was at work and uh, taking a break after a while I, I started thinking about my project and then I thought maybe if I make a grinder come from the top it's gonna be able to grind off these three blocks without damaging a torpedo itself so I'm gonna have to try that when I come back home which I did so this is how this thing came into existence so again you know I built the thing and then I started and obviously I needed to have a torpedo here so I saved the game before producing a torpedo and then when the torpedo was here that is when I built this whole thing and this is when I tweaked it and uh, made it work so now I knew okay this is how it works I just remembered exactly how and where I built everything and the settings that I put on it then I exited without saving, okay, loaded the new save, built the entire thing, set it up exactly as it was, saved again, brought the torpedo, the thing came down, and everything worked fine, everything was good. So this is one of the phases where I did not have too much or too many issues. So once again, you know, next day I'm going to work. And now I'm I'm asking myself, okay, what I'm what am I gonna do now? Okay, there there's there's gotta be something more I can do because right now I can only build one torpedo at a time, and then I have to put fuel in it, and then I have to come and grab grab it with the ship before I can build another one. I don't want to do that. I want this thing to save time and trouble, and I want it to be automated. So. I'm at work again and I'm thinking about the project and I'm like what could I do to allow myself to build more than one torpedo at a time before I come and grab them with the ship I need to, to find a way that I can store them somewhere but you know okay so first I imagine a wall with a bunch of landing gears but then how do I make it so that each torpedo is being put on a different landing gear I could use sensors, oh yeah, but that that would require a lot of, you know, a lot of thinking and this would be a hell of a puzzle, so then I thought about a spinning rack like this, so uh, yeah, the idea was easy to get, the spinning rack, but setting everything up to work, that was not easy, <clears throat> but, you know, I had the idea so I just built the rack originally these blocks at the bottom were not there and um, these were not made out of blast door blocks they were made out of armor blocks and uh, so okay the thing is built it's spinning I managed to you know set up the sensors to detect the ship and it made it spin and then the sensor on top detected the pillar and made it stop so that that was perfect that was perfect and uh, the way they are set up is this sensor here triggers a timer block the timer block tells the rotor to decrease velocity the only reason it's decreased velocity is so that it rotates counterclockwise so that to me it rotates to the right okay I could have put it increased velocity it would have only made it rotate the other way <coughs> so when the sensor on top t uh, detects this thing here it says to a timer block to tell the rotor to reset velocity so 
Originally the sensor was uh, directly speaking to the rotor but then I added the bumper so I decided to uh, use a timer block that would control both the, the, uh, the rotor and the bumper at the same time to, uh, so that I didn't have to add a bunch of sensors that would you know control everything timer blocks are so so nice okay guys when you start using a timer block you will not imagine yourself building anything without them afterwards ever since I started using them I've been using them in every single project after that <clears throat> so like I said sensor tells timer block to tell the rotor to decrease velocity sensor tells timer block to tell the rotor to reset velocity so that's how it spins right and stops when it needs to so just ignore this for now uh, so okay now this was built now I needed to get something like this that could transfer it to the rack and uh, I needed it to spin in two different directions because I wanted the torpedo to be standing up when it gets attached here I didn't want it to be like laying horizontally I wanted to be standing vertically so that's why there are two rotors here one that spins it all the way there and one that just rotates the torpedo to make it you know uh, stand in the uh, the position I wanted so uh, I wanted this uh, to be pretty much touching the torpedo as the torpedo comes down so that it doesn't have to get pushed and then pulled back and then once it's on the other side push it again that that would have been you know too much uh, too much stuff to set up so I set it so that it's already touching a torpedo and then as it comes the other side then that's when it gets pushed so I adjusted the limits of the piston to do just that So, okay, now this is set up, this is set up, we're ready to start attaching torpedoes, and of course I had, you know, exited without saving a lot of times and reloaded until everything worked exactly as I wanted it. So now we have our first torpedo attached. The, uh, the spinning rack starts spinning, that's perfect, that's good. Uh, and then when it reaches this point and the sensor tells it to stop it stops but it overshot a little bit because of the weight of the torpedo this thing here overshot to the right a little bit so okay that's not too bad I mean the, tor the landing gear is still in a good position it's still gonna detect it it's still gonna attach to it second torpedo this thing spins and then it overshot, it overshoots quite a bit more. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to do something about this. I tried a third one and a fourth one. By the time I got to the fourth one, it was no longer working. I could not attach it. And I came across a few other issues as well, which needed to be tweaked. So once again, you know, after a bunch of work and uh, going to work and coming back, it, one day I'm at work and I'm thinking, okay, what could I do to make it stop like this? And that's where the idea for the bumper came in. I tried tires, I tried a bunch of different things, and then I came up with the idea of just, once again, a rotor, a shaft, and a landing gear that comes up and uh, it had to come up fast and be there when this thing came and touched it I didn't want this thing to be here and then this thing coming and you know ramming into it like a baseball bat I wanted this thing to rotate slowly and bump onto the landing gear while it's already standing up but then my original idea was obviously to make the landing gear 
detect this and attach to it for a while stabilize it and then come back down just like it does right now but it wouldn't lock and then I started thinking that it wouldn't lock because it was part of the same construction so <laughs> you have no idea how long it took me to realize that it was because the landing gear was only touching the block right here on top this block was not reaching the middle of it so it was not triggering the uh, magnetic or magnetism of the landing gear so all I needed to do was add a block at the bottom so that the landing gear was you know touching a full surface <laughs> that's how simple it was and I, I after a while I really started thinking that I would have to come up with a different idea and that this would not work and all of this was because there was no block here at the bottom and that's it and the reason why it's blast doors block blast door blocks is because I thought also for a while that armor blocks were uh, as you can see they're not the exact same width blast door blocks are a little bit um, smaller so I thought this would give you know more room to work with uh, with the landing gear but I think it could also work with armor blocks so blast door blocks was one solution and then I told myself that if blast door blocks were not gonna work I might actually just put a piston here that goes down that the landing gear would attach to the piston and I would have of course uh, removed the um, I'll show you should have a piston somewhere okay eight okay let's let's imagine that this is where I put the piston okay so it won't go there So I would have obviously removed the tip of it and I would have left it like that and the bumper would have grabbed onto the piston but obviously the piston would have been facing down here. So I did not need to get to that point because the blast door blocks did work. I'm pretty sure pistons would have worked as well. So this is how all of the ideas came to me and I'm only telling you all of this story because I don't think that it's possible to imagine something like this you know all at once and to see it all in your head working and blah 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 okay you go one step at a time one problem at a time and in the end when you're satisfied with the product that is something you're, you're gonna get something like this so I know I used to be like that and I know a lot of people are still like that when we see something on YouTube that we like and we're like oh my god how the fuck did this guy think about something like this or how the hell did he manage to do something like this I wish I knew how it, it it's not that you don't know how it's it's just that you uh, mistakenly or falsely believe that the person who made it built it all you know in one hour or two hours and that it he imagined it all at once or you know that's not how these things are done they're done one step at a time one problem at a time and there are weeks of work in some of those projects and those are the things that these guys don't tell you <clears throat> I'm not afraid to tell you. So I guess I could also... Let's say you download this blueprint and you want to make some modifications to it. Um, trying to work with somebody else's creation can be overwhelming sometimes, especially with the amount of stuff that is there to work with so I'm gonna try and help you understand 
these welders they're just called welders obviously this grinder I think is just called grinder this grinder here is called grinder 2 okay just to try and make things simple I'm actually gonna check it right now oh no okay it's called grinder finish but at some point in the timer blocks it's called grinder 2 so this is called grinder finish obviously I think you see grinder finish somewhere in the control panel yeah, I'm not connected sorry but you see grinder finish somewhere you're gonna know what it is um, this is okay this is the rotor the rotor is called advanced rotor grinder 2 I think this rotor is called rotor grinder arm so <clears throat> this would be the arm and this would be the rotor for grinder 2 or grinder finish um, this piston I think is called piston for a landing gear because it's the first landing gear so if there are other oh, I'm frozen again so there are other pistons attached with landing gears um, you know later in the project so they all have names that are relevant to what they do um, let's just check this real quick so yeah piston for landing gear this is the first landing gear so this is why it's called this way and I just didn't change the name later on but this one here let's see how it's called piston last pickup so obviously this is the last pickup there are no other pickups after this and it's a piston so if there were other pistons after this then this would be confusing but there are no other pistons after this so now let's go take a look at the timer blocks um, I think yeah the position of the timer blocks can be a bit confusing because I put a bunch here and then I put a bunch there and so the numbers don't really uh, like it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all the way to 15 it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then it goes all the way there and continues so I did not give the timer blocks specific names um, it, it wasn't necessary the first timer block is the first one used and then timer block 2 is the second one used so let's just take a look at the actions here it's just called timer block this is the first one so this one um, okay so this is a group so that's why it doesn't tell what the action is so this one triggers the pistons for the welders which means that it's gonna make them uh, push forward so that the welders are close enough to anyway okay let's I don't I'm not I'm uh, I'm French Canadian sometimes I try to explain stuff in English and I, I start babbling so these are the pistons this is the timer block that triggers them to move forward so that the welders can weld then it also toggles the welder at the base on you can see uh, it's called welder base that's the one that it's the one right here that welds the shaft right at the beginning so at this point the pistons are working but the welders are not turned on yet the only welder that's turned on is the one over there It also turns the red lights on and turns the green light off and then it tells timer block 2 to start. 
So we're gonna come here and look at timer block two. So timer block two has a 20 seconds delay before it does anything. After 20 seconds, it reverses the uh, the pistons for the welders. It turns the welders on and then triggers timer block two. So once the pistons are fully extended and the welders are in the middle of the torpedo, the timer block two tells the pistons to start pulling back and since they're very really slow, they pull back really slowly and at the same time that they start pulling back, <coughs> sorry, the welders uh, start uh, they, they get turned on and they start welding right away so they weld as they pull back not as they uh, pull in or push in whatever so we're back to timer block 2 then yeah timer block 2 tells timer block 3 to start so we're gonna go to timer block 3 this one has an 8 seconds timer it tells the welders to uh, turn off, the welder at the base to also turn off, and then it triggers the piston that pushes the grinder, turns on, turns the grinder on, and then tells timer block four to start. Oops. This one has a seven seconds timer, that's all the grinder needs to actually do its thing. That's how I set up the timers by the way. I I looked at the uh, the things working and then I tried, I, I said okay well it's been about eight seconds so I'm gonna put the next phase in eight seconds. So that's how I decide uh, which timer has, you know, is how long and stuff like that so after seven seconds this uh, grinder toggles off the piston brings it back the piston with the landing gear the one that's going to transfer the torpedo over to the next phase is triggered on and then timer block five starts so timer block five six seconds so um, I guess the six seconds is the amount of time that the piston needs to reach the torpedo and attach to it. And then after six seconds the rotor is triggered so <clears throat> the torpedo begins to be transferred onto the other side and timer block six is triggered. Timer block six has 21 seconds um, delay. 21 seconds is the time that the torpedo go goes from here all the way to the next phase and is now come, you know, uh, resting on top of the landing gear on the other side and it's safe to detach. So after 21 seconds it's going to detach. Landing gear is um, Actually, I'm, I think I'm going to have to show you. <clears throat> okay, landing gear first pickup, that would be the one, right? It's just called landing gear. I guess this is the one. Anyways, as you can see, uh, auto lock on and off. There's the only thing that you have with auto lock here is a toggle you don't get a button like this one to toggle block off or toggle, toggle block on all you get is a toggle that you press it once it turns it on you press it twice it turns it off and I wish there was a specific button for each action but there's only one so in this case I had to give it the action to toggle auto lock off and then to toggle the landing gear uh, to unlock the landing gear so I had to give it two actions instead of just one which would have been um, 
Actually, no, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, but at the time, I thought it would, you know, give me more trouble. Then later, there's another timer block that just resets the auto lock on it, and that's it. Um, so yeah, th this simply tells the landing gear to release once the torpedo has been has been transferred, and then timer block 13. Yes, at that point, I just ran towards a timer block, any timer block that I wasn't using at the time and I set the thing up in this one so that's why it jumps from 6 to 13 but then it goes back to 7, 8 and, and for the rest of the way I decided to go and uh, follow the order of the numbers here but for that one I simply like I said I just ran towards a timer block randomly just one that I knew I wasn't already using and it turned out to be 13 <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, this one has three seconds delay, and it's gonna make the rotor first pick up. Okay, no, actually. Uh, so yeah, the landing gears detach three seconds later. The uh, the piston with the landing gear on it, it just comes back, retracts, and uh, I think this timer block here resets the auto lock on the landing gear to prepare it for the next um, the next torpedo so let's go see timer block 7 yeah this one toggles auto lock back on it starts the uh, grinder finish which is the, the one all the way over there on top not the one right in front of me it's this one there it toggles it on timer block seven set up actions so and then uh, triggers the rotor for the grinder arm which is the longer one the one that brings the whole thing down and timer block eight starts so it takes eight seconds for all of this to happen after eight seconds the rotor that controls the grinder itself <coughs> is told to reverse and reverse is just okay go one way and then when it reaches its uh, its limit that I set up which is 30 degrees uh, negative and 30 degrees positive so it's just gonna go from back and forth from 30 degrees positive to 30 degrees negative uh, and it works both ways which is why it's perfect to make it um, it doesn't matter which position it starts from it's gonna grind off the three blocks that remain and that's it or the two blocks no it's actually three yeah so at this point as soon as this one works, uh, the red lights are turned off. <coughs> God damn it! And the green lights are turned back on, which means it's it. Right now, this torpedo is far enough in production; it is now safe to start production of another torpedo. Originally, these lights were not there, so it was just the rotor and the next timer block. But I came and added these ones in there, so. Timer block 9, 16 seconds, this is after 16 seconds, uh, the advanced rotor grinder arm comes back up, uh, the landing gear receiving, receiving, I'll go show you, it's the one right there, it's the one that the torpedo lays or rests on this is the receiving landing gear so the, the timer block I was looking at it just tells this arm while it's down here to go back up and this one here will unlock to allow the next landing gear to to do its thing to grab on to it and transfer it to the other side so I'm not gonna continue with the timer blocks I've gone through what nine of them and 
it was really just to help you understand how the whole system works. Each timer block has a timer and has actions that it performs and then triggers the next timer block in the chain and this is how the whole thing works. It's pretty much the same thing here. The timer blocks in here, uh, I think these four right here are used to lock and unlock the four landing gears that you see there and the four here control the rotor and the uh, the landing gear over there that you know just acts acts as a stopper for the spinning rack and that's pretty much it guys um, it's not that complicated if you already know how to use timer blocks and if you already know how to use rotors and pistons uh, but if you don't then that's where it might look overwhelming or look really complicated but it's really not okay now if you've never used rotors pistons and timer blocks and sensors and all that I recommend you know start yourself a small project that uses sensors start yourself a small project that uses timer blocks small project that uses rotors and a small project that uses pistons and once you've used and uh, each one of these things and made them work you're gonna be able to start working on projects like these um, I'm gonna show you how I learned how to use rotors real quick This is a ship I built in survival months ago, and the landing gear is retractable. So this was my very first time using rotors, and at the time it was really intimidating for me, and you know I had to watch tutorials and stuff, and eventually I managed to make this work. So this is how I learned how to use rotors. The first time that I used pistons, um, actually it was on this ship as well. I'm gonna press the other button. As you can see, there's a piston pushing the rocket launchers or deploying rocket launchers and pulling them back. So this was my first time using pistons. <coughs> It's really not complicated. All I'm doing is reverse, 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 and I'm trigger triggering it manually. So start with something small like this to learn how to use these things. Um, and obviously, if you're already familiar with all of that, then you don't even have to listen to what I'm saying right now. It's just for people, who, because I know some people will be asking the question oh my god how did you do this how did you do that this is how it's done and you start with small projects and then move on from there um, so like I said this is how I learned how to use rotors and pistons um, timer blocks the first time I used timer blocks I'll show you right now it's on another ship one that I built about maybe three weeks maybe a month ago um, deep space exploration ship this was the first project that I ever built in creative mode by the way This one uses these two timer blocks right there to trigger the antennas on top of the ship. So you can see them work. This one's flashing and then this one's flashing and then it's, it's throwing the ball back at this one. So this one triggers this and this one triggers this and they just throw the ball at each other endlessly. And what they do is they trigger messages with the antenna 
the, the two antennas over there. So this is a deep space exploration ship. So let's say you encounter a ship somewhere and it you see a ship somewhere in the distance you start broadcasting these messages just to tell them that you're not hostile but you will defend yourself if you need to and that you do have the weaponry to do so so this is what the timer blocks do this is the first thing I ever did with timer blocks and once again I had to watch uh, a few tutorials and the tutorials I watched they they didn't teach me how to do what I wanted to do I still had to figure a lot of it on my own but um, at least I knew you know a little bit of how they work <clears throat> so I've just resetted everything to normal So this was my first time using timer blocks and uh, my first time using sensors. Uh, it wasn't, no this wasn't my first time but I'll show you something I did with sensors on this ship. sensor field range and then control panel I was there five sensors I thought I put only four proximity alarm okay so there's really five sensors I really thought I only put four anyways I want to show on HUD so now I'm I'm seeing the sensor field range and as you can see it's pretty much all around the ship and these sensors they will detect if a ship or or if you're close to a station and stuff like that and all they do is they trigger an alarm inside the ship if you get too close to something so this was not my first time using sensors my first time I used it to trigger a door to open and to close and that's it that that is really it and uh, this one you know it just triggers an alarm there are sound blocks here for different alarms that the ship has but anyways shared in this video was helpful um, I don't think I have anything else to talk about I guess I've already shown that in my last video but I could show it again just you know to see the thing actually working if you watch the other video which you probably have seen already you see me uh, you know build three sorry three torpedoes uh, using the factory and this video that I'm recording right now is only intended to help people if they want to start building their own factory seen quite a few factories on YouTube well when I say quite a few I mean I've seen maybe three in total and none of the guys who built them actually explain how they did it so I had to learn how to use each one of the uh, the blocks on my own use uh, 
by doing other projects and then I felt like I was somewhat ready to build my own factory it was a heck of a challenge I had never built one before I had no idea where I was going I am not an engineer in real life I'm not even a mechanic um, I drive a Zamboni for a living so uh, coming up with all of this I had to do it one step at a time one problem at a time and like I said a lot of the ideas that I got for this I got them while I was at work either filling up the, the Zamboni because that takes at least 15-20 minutes so I have time to think This button starts the production of another torpedo and this button triggers the spinning rack. And the button uses the exact same timer block as the sensor so that's why it works on the exact same timer. Um, the button triggers the rotor after 4 seconds and then that timer block triggers another timer block which also has a I, I think it's 3.5 seconds to allow this thing to rotate for a while and then as soon as the path is clear and this thing comes up and waits for the other side of the spinning rack to hit it so whoops this is pretty much it for this video and I really have to go because I'm uh, I need to leave